All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this, the title of my word is all in one. That is no reprieve, no retreat and no regrets. Mind you, there are no retreats in the Bible. Have you ever noticed that there is no retreat in the Bible? That means the church of Jesus Christ will never regress, will never retreat. Are you with me? But they will move forward with aggression, assertiveness and the boldness of the Holy Spirit that God gives to you. No matter what has happened in the history of the church, the church has never declined. The church has never regressed. Despite persecutions, despite the challenges and the pain and the suffering and the sorrow, the church spearheaded and moved forward and continued to multiply. Praise the Lord. And that is why in the old when the emperors and the people wanted to douse this fire of the Holy Spirit from the lives of early Christian believers, they could not, so they left them alone for a period of time. They said, if this is from God, it will flourish and prosper. If it is not, it will die out. Praise be to God, 2000 down, years down the line, we are all agile, we are all afresh, we are seeing souls being saved, the gospel being preached to the nations and people from all over the globe are bowing their knees before Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this thing is from God. Jesus is from God. Christianity is from God. Being a Christian is from God. Having Christ inside of your life, of your spirit, soul and body is from God. And therefore I would encourage you today that be excited, be rejoicing. Jesus loves you the most in this church. More than your pastor, more than the elders of this church is Jesus who died for you absolutely naked on the cross of Calvary. There was not even a tunic. You must have seen Jesus' picture painted by some people out of respect. They put a tunic on his, on his uh, body but there was no tunic sir. He was absolutely naked on the cross with arms spread wide saying Father forgive them for they do not know what they do. Are you with me? That is the heart of Jesus. That is the heart of our Father. And that is the heart of our Abba God. He loves us so dearly that He sent His only, one and only begotten Son, that whosoever will believe in Him will never perish, but have what? Everlasting life, eternal life. And I get so excited. When God loved us so dearly, when he committed himself so fully, then how much more we need to walk with him like Enoch walked, like Elijah walked, that they were so precious to God, their living and their lifestyle was so glorious to Yahweh, that did not see physical death on this earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that. And imagine that God has the power to keep a man on this planet earth in a physical form and God has a power that he can whisk them away in the physical form and keep them till the time of the tribulation when those two souls will be sent back to testify again against the wickedness of this world amazing isn't it amazing that Elijah and Enoch have not tasted physical death they are still preserved and put somewhere in heaven in the place in the realm of glory sustained by the very presence of God probably eating the manna of God enjoying the company of the angels and one day they will return back and then they will suffer the physical death after they have done one thing is preach the gospel 2000 years ago they preached the word they were the prophets of God and for this period and the span of time they are preserved to be sent back again to do one thing to preach the gospel 
The bottom line is preach the gospel. The bottom line is make the disciples. The bottom line is save souls. The ministry then the work that you have got the primary occupation that we as believers and as, as the sons and the children of God is that we are called to be the preachers of the gospel and the teachers of the word of God discipling people from every aspect from every arena from every demographic praise God and that's what God is calling and mind you that if you ever thought that you are an engineer or a doctor or an MBA or, or a clerk or a teacher that's your secondary occupation your primary occupation is that you are the evangelist assigned by God given a task that you will accomplish whilst you are alive on this earth amen whether you are living or whether you are dying you are in Jesus and everything that you do is for his glory and for his honor so I'm going to talk to you about all in one that means my spirit my soul my body is in one Yeshua I am fully committed fully dedicated fully devoted to accomplish the work that God has given to me and I believe that he has given the same to you too amen turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 20 chapter 2 verses 21 to 24 it says and the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman I like that what do I like the most about it that God does a first surgery in the garden of Eden God did not take the soil and made Eve but God did something very important he took the rib from the man and made it into an Eve isn't that amazing that means God did not use any other articles or God did not use any other thing I don't know what exactly transpired but God took the rib of man and converted that rib of man into this beautiful woman a man that carries a womb within her are you with me and brought it to Adam I like that all right and so what he said he made into a woman and he brought her to the man and Bible says in verse 23 and Adam said this is now bone of my bones every man said my wife is the bone of my bones half-hearted attempt you are saying are you sure about it okay Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called what woman because she has taken she was taken out of man therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh now mind you no one is getting married today and it's a beautiful message to give on marriage on commitment all right on covenant making and Alin and I have attended many marriages and I've seen people make those vows covenantal vows they commit a husband and a wife a man and a woman are committing themselves to one another and they are making those beautiful vows before God and before the angels and before the congregation and before the pastors and they made a commitment right and they make a vow and then they commit themselves one to another now I'm not talking about an earthly marriage here but I'm talking about a heavenly marriage where Jesus is a bridegroom and we are the bride that is is when second Adam looks at you he says you are the bone of my bone and you are the flesh of my flesh that's what Jesus is saying to you my church you are the bone of my bone and you're the flesh of my flesh because from my sides you have been birthed into being my bride isn't that amazing from the side when God pierced Adam he took one rib out he cut the sides of the body took out the rib and produced a woman similarly when Jesus was pierced on the side 
water and blood flowed forth and produced a powerful church a bride that will be holy that is blood of bloods and bone of bones water of water of the Lord Jesus Christ that means if you think that one leg you can keep it in the world and one leg you can keep it out in Jesus that kind of a relationship does not work that means a bride that has been bought by the blood of the lamb taught by the Holy Spirit of God sanctified by the word of God must be so prepared and ready to do the work of God fully wholeheartedly devotedly as a bride that serveth a husband whilst he's alive are you with me my dear brothers and sisters we are the bride of Jesus Christ so this prompts us a question that if we are committed in a relationship and I talk to you about commitment today when we are committed into a relationship when we had made a vow I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back when I had made that vow many years ago when you made the vow a couple of weeks ago or a few years ago you are committing yourself to your bridegroom and saying Lord God Almighty no matter what happens I will not forsake you I will not go away from you I will be steadfast in my walk with you I will love you I will cherish you I will nourish you and till my death I shall be faithful to you whatever happens no matter whoever walks by the world my eyes will be only fixed on you that's what a good bride does a good bride is not only sleeping with her husband but looking at other men all around but a good bride is a wholly devoted dedicated woman who is looking at the author and the finisher of her faith and you are the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord has called you to be in fully committed atmosphere committed attitude unto the Lord that you'll say God here am I are you with me the question is what is commitment this prompts when we read this passage of scripture we must understand and ask us ourselves a question that what is commitment commitment is a willful decision to obligate oneself through a pledge promise vow or oath requiring them to perform a duty to someone I like that when you make a commitment to the Lord when you said I have decided to follow Jesus you are just not doing a something in a confused state of mind you have made up your mind you have made up your heart you have made up your spirit to say Jesus I will follow you and that is very very important so it is a willful decision to obligate oneself through a pledge a promise a vow or oath requiring them to perform a duty to someone so what did you do when you said Lord Jesus I love you you're saying Lord till my death till my last breath of my nostrils I will serve you I will follow after you I will obey your word I am obliged to do you the duty that you have called me to do and if you love the Lord God Almighty and if you're fulfilling the command of the Lord God Almighty that love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul with all your spirit with all your strength then you are also being given a commission because a love commandment puts you in a love commission that you will have to fulfill whether you like it or not you may think it's only pastor Samuel's job I'm sorry to say no sir along with me you will also stand together to preach the gospel of Jesus all over the world and so if you are thinking that it's only pastor job I'll give my tithe I'll give my monies I'll give my attendance and that's it and I'm free I'm on vacation no sir let me remind you you are the bride of Christ as much as I am the bride of Christ and it is my duty as it is yours too that we will serve a Yeshua Messiah amen so it is imperative that we understand that and we take it into our spirit with commitment comes responsibility when you have committed yourself there is a responsibility attached you cannot say I'm committed and then shirk your responsibilities it cannot happen 
When you say I'm committed, that means you have bound yourself, you have made a covenant that you will serve Yeshua not only on Fridays, but every day of your life. Amen. Amen? Right? So it's very important for us to understand. Right? When we make, you know, when these weddings remind us that God made a commitment and a pledge through Jesus, his son to us. If you would turn with me to the book of John chapter 6 verses 35 to 40 and Jesus said to them I am the bread of life what Jesus said to them come on speak it I am he who comes to me shall never hunger now we have been betrothed we have been engaged to the Lord God Almighty who says I am the bread of life that means if you are hungry come to him the bride gets hungry comes to the husband the Lord Jesus Christ you shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst I like that praise God he who believes in me shall never thirst but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe all that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out so you are in safe hands in today's marriages outside in the world there is 60 percent divorce rate and that is a pathetic situation people are uncertain whether they are getting into a marital relationship whether the marriage will sustain the storms of life whether through the thick and the thin whether they'll make it to the end is a big challenge and many people have that question when they enter into relationships and when they make a covenant or write a contract they are thinking that you know whether it's going to work or not but how do you do it you do it by faith you start your journey by faith similarly in our relationship with Jesus Christ we may not have the entire picture laid before us but we start a journey by faith we say yes Lord why because then when we get to know the Lord then we get to know he's the bread of life when we get to know that he is the waters of life that I will never be hungry and I will never be thirsty and when I come to him I will never be shunned I will never be cast out because he will always embrace me he will always draw close to me and allow me to come near to him for I have come down from heaven verse 38 not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me this is the will of the father who sent me that of all he has given me I should lose zilch I like that but should raise it up at the last day Jesus is talking about the last day verse 40 and this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day it's a juxtaposition here Jesus said they may have eternal life but I will raise them up on the last day may is a question mark and the may is the question mark is when the son of man will come will he find faith on earth that's a question mark you started well with the Lord you got engaged you got water baptized you got spirit filled you were speaking in tongues but somewhere down the line there was storm somewhere down the line there was pains and sufferings and sorrows and persecutions hard times difficult times where your heart was tested where the temptations were there trials were there and sometimes you made it sometimes you had a fall probably you were defeated more often than your victories that could be talked about and so because of which you were discouraged and you stopped walking after the Lord and you stopped following your Yeshua wholeheartedly are you with me the Bible also says in John chapter 14 verses 15 to 21 if you love me keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper I like that he's fortifying you if you love me church my bride Jesus is saying if you love me what he's saying heed my commandments keep my commandments that's what Jesus is saying so the test of your love is by obeying the commandments of God 
and what is the commandment love the lord your god praise the lord you love the lord but do you also come under the lordship of the lord that means lord i will do the commission that you have commanded me to do i will oh lord love my neighbor as you have loved me and as i love myself i will love my wife my children my community my manager my people in the society i will also love my enemies i will also love the ones who gossip behind my back and do backbiting business who talk about me in my absence are you with me so i have decided to love you lord i have decided to obey your word irrespective of the challenges that i will face are you with me so what does he say he says he will give you another helper jesus is saying i will not only love you i will not only empower you but i will give you another help i will give you someone to fortify your faith i will give you someone and that someone is no one ordinary but he is the spirit of christ himself that i will bestow upon you i will best i will give him to you so that he will help you and comfort you in difficult times the helper is the word parakletos parakletos means he is the comforter and you only need comfort when you are in distress you only need comfort when you are going through a temptation you only need comfort when you are in pain you only need comfort when you are persecuted you don't need comfort all the time are you with me you only need comfort in times of need and jesus is saying in your times of need i have given a parakletos to fortify your faith so that when you are shaky he will come and establish you he will come and strengthen you he will come and establish you that you will be be firm in the faith that i have called you in are you with me and he says he will abide with you forever i like that say holy spirit lives with me forever come on say it loudly when i get excited when the holy ghost is there you know i told i said i kiss i gave my hug to judah this morning and i kissed him bye bye i said remember you're not alone the spirit of god is inside you yes. talk to him you need help ask him for help but you must honor him in your life are you with me right i get excited you know why because i am in constant communication with my father all the time why because i know i cannot live without him if i have to overcome the world i need to be in constant communion with the holy spirit because he comes and comforts he comes and guides and then further on he says the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive jesus is saying that so this spirit of truth has been given to the church of jesus to the people of god who are bought by the blood of the lamb who have been sealed with a stamp of the holy ghost yeshua on your forehead that the mark the beast mark will not come on your hand or on your forehead that's what is happening now triple six is now have been rolled out in companies they are inserting chips now everywhere and they are propagating they're saying it's great fun it will become a norm that will they'll say 50% of your employees if they are chipped and 50% will say no what is going to happen company will tomorrow tell you okay come on dp world everyone take a chip inside your body what are you going to do come on will you stand for the truth and say no i will not take that time is coming soon that time is coming soon it's already happening you saw that video that was floating in your whatsapp messages that triple chip triple six chip was there inserted in 50% of the employees of one company in america and they're happy about it they swing their arm the doors open they swing their arm the payment goes from the bank they go through the grocery everything is operational that's great technology is great but technology can be deceptive because that's where the bible is saying that mark of the beast is going to come are you willing to say no is a question that time is coming we are living in that era that it can be rolled out all your biometrics is with everywhere your eye scan your thumb prints everywhere you you cannot travel now are you with me all that biometric data will be given to united nations and to that spirit of antichrist that will rise in the end time days and he will make it mandatory 
government after government will make it mandatory for you to be chipped. Today you can't operate without your Emirates ID card. Am I right? That Emirates ID card will go inside your body one day. That's the agenda of the Antichrist. And that's going to happen soon. So the question is coming, will you still be committed when you are supposed to take the mark? Because your job will be in the balance. Your food and your wine will be in balance. Your transport, your living in the country will be in balance. And then you will have to make a choice whether you are still married to Yeshua, betrothed to Yeshua, or would you compromise for the benefits of this world? It's a question. Are you with me? So Jesus is saying the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. It is the spirit of God that gives us the assurance in our human spirit that you and I are the sons of God. You and I are the daughters of God. Nobody else. How much your pastor preaches to you he cannot convince to you that you are a child of God. It is the spirit of God that dwells within you will convict you and convince you and assure you that you and I are the children of the most high God. Hallelujah. I will not leave you orphans. Hallelujah. I like that. I will not leave you orphans. Praise the Lord. I like the words of Jesus. Is there any orphan among our midst? Do you think like that? That your parents have left you, your pastor has left you, your church has left you, your manager has despised you, your company has rejected you and you feel like an orphan today. Jesus is saying, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. I like that. World will see me, not but you will see me. How will you see him? Through the manifestation of his spirit. How will the church see Jesus? How will you enjoy the tangible presence of Jesus? Because the seeing, the opening of your eyes of faith, the power has been given to the church. You have the USP to see Jesus in the nows. The world does not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you see Jesus? If you don't see Jesus, ask the Lord to open your eyes. The eyes of faith to see Jesus, to know Jesus. He's tangible, he's real, he's more real than me that you see me in the physical form. Are you with me? Yes. Praise the Lord. He says, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Say, I will live. Amen. Then he says, at that day you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. He who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Abba. Praise the Lord. He who loves me will be loved by whom? By my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. God is talking corporately yet individually. Are you with me? He's talking for the church and he's talking individually that I will manifest myself to you. That means to every believer who walks in faith, believing in the Lord and asking God to manifest his presence, he will manifest himself to you. He will show himself to you. He may look, you may see him transfigured. You may see him, you may hear his voice. You may see his wine sedge, but you have the power to see the manifestation of the glory of Yeshua. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How great a commitment has God made to us. Isn't that amazing? The author of the book of Hebrews gives us this great truth. In the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verses 13 to 20 And when God made a promise to Abraham Because he could swear by no one greater He swore, he swore by himself Saying surely blessing I will bless you Wow I like that and multiplying I will multiply you and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise 
For men indeed swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. When you make an oath, it's an end to all dispute. When you made an oath, you said your property is my property, your home is my home, your religion is my religion, your God is my God. That's what you are making an oath, a covenant and a commitment to Yeshua. He says, no longer my kingdom, O oh Lord. I will carry the surname of Yeshua. In our culture, when we marry our women, the husband lends his name. It's not the other way around. When I marry Jesus, he gives me Christ as my surname. Hallelujah. That's the culture of heaven. He gives you his name. You will be called by his name. That's what he's saying. And so what he says in 17, does God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. How did he confirm it? By an oath. Because he could swear by nobody else greater. He said, I will bless you. I am the great I am. There is no one before me. There is no one after me. There is nothing besides me. I cannot take an oath with somebody else's name. I will take the oath by my name. And I swear to you that I will bless you. I swear to you I will multiply you. I swear to you that I will make an oath. That by the immutability of his counsel. The promise will be fulfilled to you. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation. What we'll have? Say it, consolation. Say consolation. I know many of you are going through difficult times. And that's why I'm saying certain words. You must speak that word. Comforter, consolo, consoler, consolation. Are you with me? It is well with my soul. It is well with my future. It is well with my finances. It is well with my life. Even though you don't see it. You must say it. Why? Because God cannot change. Economies may change. Governments may change. But God's word will never change. Hallelujah. We might have strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. I like that. What we have? Hope as the anchor of our soul. What is the hope? My Jesus is coming. I am not an orphan on this world. I am no longer alone. It doesn't matter what I am going through. I know my deliverer cometh. I know my deliverer will deliver me. I know my redeemer will redeem me. I know my Jesus will show himself mighty for me. So what is he saying? It is impossible for God to lie. We might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which enters the presence behind the veil. Where the forerunner has entered for us. Even Jesus. Having become the high priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. I like that. This points us to this question. Since it is impossible for God to lie. If it is impossible for God to lie. Is it possible that if we are not living in the manifested promises of God that we may be the ones that are not committed is a question because God doesn't lie are you with me God doesn't lie so is it possible is it possible is it possible that if we are not enjoying the manifested presence of God and the promises of God in our lives that is a question of commitment to us are we committed we should always examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 examine yourselves your pastor will not examine you 
Your life group leader will not examine you. Your youth leader will not examine you. Your little angel leader will not examine you. You examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13.5 Prove your own selves. Knowing not your own selves. Not how that Jesus Christ is in you. Except he be reprobates. It's very clear. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. Until and unless you are a reprobate. Until and unless you have apostated from your faith. Or you have a worldly mind. Is it possible that you will not examine yourself? That's what he's questioning. And that's what he's asking us. And that's what he's saying. You know why? That is our commitment of trust to God. What is it? That is our commitment of trust to God. When you are in the hurricane, when you are going through an earthquake, when you are going through joblessness, when you are going through no business, when you are going through no children, when you are going through no finances, when all these things are happening, are you still firm in your faith Knowing your savior who has promised to do you good. Is a question of your commitment of your trust to Yeshua. I am reminded of this conversation Jesus had with some people along the road. In the gospel of Luke chapter 9 verses 57 to 62. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road. That someone said to him Lord. I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes. See what Jesus is saying? I will follow you Lord. What are you following Jesus for? Jesus is quantifying with a qualitative understanding that hey, I have got nowhere to live. Why do you want to follow me? A question. So he says, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to go son of man has nowhere to go and Jesus said to him what son of man has nowhere to lay his head then he said to another follow me Jesus follow you you've got no gold to give no salary to give. You don't even have a home to stay. And follow you. For what? Come on. Why are you following Jesus? Is a question a lot of time we must ask. Why are we following Jesus? Why do you like to follow Jesus? Is a question. And when we know that question. And we contemplate. And we understand our commitment that when we started, we started our journey by faith. Abraham started his journey by faith. God called him and he said, yes, Lord. He didn't know the end picture. He didn't know whether God will provide him gold and silver. He didn't know whether he'll have his private army. He didn't know that his barren wife will ever bear children. He didn't know. But he heard the call come out of Come out of your country and follow me. And he started that journey. I remind you of that call and of that commitment that you made with Yeshua. On the day you were so excited. There was no way to hold your excitement. You know why? Because you have made Jesus your Lord. You have gone through the waters of baptism. There is joy in heaven. There is joy on earth. There is joy in my heart. There is peace in my heart. You didn't bother about your job. You didn't bother about where the money will come from. You didn't bother whether I will be fruitful or not. But you were bothered how you will be fruitful in the kingdom of Yeshua. And that is what mattered to you the most. Verse 59, then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. Wow. When God gives you a call, 
he gives you a commission when he gives you a commission he gives you a responsibility for souls that are perishing must be saved and added into the kingdom of god he says you go and preach the kingdom of god it doesn't matter let the dead bury the dead why did jesus say so they were not dead his relatives were not dead only his father was dead do you think that jesus had no compassion do you think that jesus did not have any mercy he's a god of mercy he's a god of compassion do you think that jesus had no guts jesus had no empathy for this man's father who died no sir jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he has empathy he has compassion he has mercy but the hour the, of the need of the hour is that you must preach the kingdom let the dead bury the dead they can manage it they can manage it the urgency is that you will fulfill the call and the commitment that you have made there'll be no turning back oh god there'll be no turning back that's what he was saying and another also said lord i will follow you but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house but jesus said to him no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god oh no one what does it what does it mean what is jesus saying jesus is saying you put the hand on the plow nobody else is there to help you must plow you must sow the seed you must reap the harvest if you will not do it the harvest will die the harvest will get spoiled rain will come dew will come the harvest will get spoiled you cannot once you have put your hand to the plow you can say let me go and bury my father because the need of the hour is reaping of the harvest the need of the hour is my souls are perishing need of the hour is that if you put your hand to the plow and looking back is not is fit for the kingdom of god my dear brothers and sisters that's what jesus is saying these are not my words don't get angry with your pastor if you get angry get angry with jesus because this is his word i'm just his postman i want to deliver to you what he has put in my heart so that you will get ready you know why the signs of the time is telling us that jesus is coming soon the earth is reeling like a drunkard the heavens are shaking there are signs on the seas and in the air things are happening war is about to happen in the middle east war is about to happen somewhere in the north korea we don't know where it starts but it is going to start and it will end up to become a world war 3 and it will be a nuclear warfare it's happening it could happen whilst you are alive and let me remind you if we are in that timing in that time frame we must be ready found doing what god has called us to do if i put my hand to the plow i will not look back even if my father has been dead let them bury they can manage are you with me no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god one of the greatest temptations the devil has used against his people throughout the history of the church is the temptation of discouragement how can jesus say i will not go and bury my dead forget this jesus man this jesus is crazy jesus because he's got no empathy for my father he's got no empathy for my people my wife is sick my children are sick i have to give them panadol take them to the doctor i can't go to the church if i am the ministry of helps team you know i have to attend to something i am let me tell you what happened yesterday you must pray Brian's father fell in the in the in the bathroom and he fractured his rib pray for him but Brian showed up in the morning he said no i am attending to my father now i have to take care of him he cannot move he can is plastered he is given bed rest i cannot show up he showed up in the morning that's commitment brother hello 6 o'clock he came home to pick up my son that's commitment 6 o'clock Five o'clock, my son got up from his bed. He gets up only on that day alone, Friday. That's commitment, and I applaud that and appreciate that. 
He said, no, fine, my father has broken his rib. I will take care of him. Pastor, you take care of the board. Imagine the pastor has to take care of the board and also preach the gospel. No, that's commitment. That's commitment. Give the Lord a big clap offering. That's commitment. And that is required when you put your hand to the plow. You cannot say, man, I have said yes. And last minute I cannot say no. That's the call of the Holy Spirit to the church in these end time days. And let me encourage you church. This is the biggest temptation that the church faces. Is the temptation of discouragement that entices them to look back. When you get discouraged in your walk with God, you start looking back. Why we are told not to look back? Because there had been, you know, occasions where people looked back. Lord's wife looked back to Sodom and she became a pillar of salt. Genesis 19.26 talks about in Exodus 16.3, Israel while passing through the wilderness looked back to Egypt. This is the issue even came up between two mighty prophets of God. Elijah and Elisha. The choice was whether Elisha will look back or not. When the mantle was thrown on Elisha, what happened? Let's turn to the book of 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plying with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And what happened? And he left the oxen, ran after Elijah. Come on. He was in the middle of doing something important. But when the call was placed, when the mantle was thrown from the man of God, this guy is running after Elijah. Whoa. Now see it's further down there. What happens? It's a beautiful story. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother. Then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? Elijah saying, so Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Elijah typifies Jesus. Elijah threw a mantle on Elisha. Now this picture is saying, painting a picture that this guy wanted to say bye-bye to daddy and mommy. But that's not what the story is saying. The story is saying here, go back again for what I have I done to you. The moment Elijah said that, he understood the anointing, the call that was placed on Elisha was not an ordinary call. He knew he has to forsake everything. So what happened? He did not get, go to say bye bye daddy mommy. He took his oxen. He took the cart. He took the wood and made ox roast. Ate and said bye to his people and came and followed Elijah. What was he trying to portray? He was saying that all my strength and all my dependence that was on the world system for it to produce for me and to satisfy my need, I do not want to depend on it. It is the anointing of God that will provide for me. That's what he was saying. When he understood the value, when he understood the quality of the call that was placed upon Elisha. And when Elijah put a second question, he did not just took it casually, but he went, slaughtered the ox, and he said, no more dependence on the world system of provision. I will depend on my God, and I will serve the man of God. That's what he was saying. He made an ox roast. So Elisha destroyed the temptation that devil could use against him. Because oxen were his source of food and income in the world system. By destroying them, he removed the temptation to turn back. Now I'm not telling you, give up your jobs and follow Jesus. I'm telling you that your jobs 
are your secondary duty but i'm reminding you of the mantle that was thrown on you by jesus himself when he called you to become his sons and his daughters that your primary call is that when you put your hand to the plow you will never look back hallelujah that's what i'm reminding you and that's what the holy spirit is telling us how tempting it can be that when things get tough and hope may seem lost that we look back to egypt the world system for a source of supply we think we can live on both systems no sir if you ever thought that you're living on both systems and you may think logically yes yes because my provision comes from my secular job yes sir but that's not your secular job your secular job your spiritual and primary job is to serve yeshua and then the secondary job you may be a banker you may be a doctor you may be an engineer you may be doing anything else but your primary job is to preach the gospel of the kingdom that's what jesus is saying the question is are we doing that what god has called us to do are you with me there's one very important point we should remember that in these last days it will be our commitment that tests our hearts the bible says in the book of psalm chapter 37 verses 5 to 6 commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass what will he bring it to pass your desires your dreams your passions your ambitions he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday my dear church remember that discouragement is a major snare of the devil to tempt us into times of despair and forgetting our commitments to the lord but let us not forget god's commitment to us i'm reminding to you never forget god's commitment to us the bible says in the book of 1 kings chapter 8 verse 56 blessed be the lord who has given rest to his people israel according to all that he promised who promised god there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant moses i like that not even a one promise not even one word fell to the ground every word that was spoken by prophet moses was fulfilled for his people israel philippians 4 19 to 20 says what says and my god shall supply all your need hey buddy pull up your socks roll up your sleeves and work hard that's what he was saying when there's persecution is hitting he said don't stop preaching the gospel that's what he's saying so that's what he was talking to him in that world they were both amateur and professional athletes are you with me so what happens with the professional athletes the professional athlete will compete in the harshest competitions do you agree with me vijay yes, yes. we have got some cricket team captains here stephen vijay all these people they compete man you see them steven looks all glorious and nice now but when he's on the field you see his passion his fire his anger everything can be seen if you see me on the field you'll not say man this pastor i didn't follow this pastor is crazy man i will never pick kabaddi with him or any other game with him man we compete why we compete because we want to express our professionalism even though we may not know everything right so no matter how intense the opposition or how difficult the circumstances are and paul was giving this idea conveying when he used the words at lessis in this verse paul was in essence asking number one question are you an amateur who serves the lord just for fun oh if youth will take me for paintballing then only i'll go to the youth but when aunty suniti calls me for prayer meeting then oh you know aunty i'll come later i've got this homework to do that homework to do this class to attend are you with me 
Number two, have you committed yourself to go all the way to the end regardless of the fight that ensues? Is a question. Are you serving the Lord only because it is popular and enjoyable for the moment? You only come in the nice dark environment, some floodlights are coming, some good music is happening, then you are dancing. In your difficult times, can you dance for the Lord? Can you worship for Jesus in your difficult times? Can you still be joyful and say praise the Lord, hallelujah, music or no music, I will give it all to the Lord. You come with me to the tribal areas, we go on missions and I'll tell you when they clap, it resounds. When they sing, heaven comes down. No music. No this Alan and Heath, some mixer and some hi-fi cameras and some hi-fi instruments, sir. Are you with me? Power comes down. You know why? Music, no music, praise the Lord. Doesn't matter, he's singing in A or tenor or in soprano, all are singing. The horses and the donkeys all are singing. Some is braying, some is screaming, some is meowing. But everyone is singing. No one is silent. That's how they worship the Lord. They give it all. Give it all. When they scream, they scream all. They don't say, oh, it's written consolation. They give it all. My dear brothers and sisters, the time that we give it all unto the Lord God Almighty. The question is, are you a professional that is willing to pay any price, undergo any kind of hardship, bear up under any pressure and endure it all until you come out the winner? Are you really committed? Is a question the Holy Spirit is asking you. If you are not committed, you will never make it to the end. Why is that so? Last week we studied, Paul was saying, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished my race. I wait for the crown of righteousness that awaits for me. Crown of righteousness. Say crown of righteousness. It will only be given to the one who complete the race. It is not for the one who sat on the bench, who rolled up, who went to the hospital, who fell dead. No, 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 no. Who have completed the race will get the prize. That's what Paul is reminding Timothy. He's saying you do not strive. You strive athletically. You strive professionally. You are no longer an amateur. You are no longer who's drinking the milk of the word. You are a man who is exercised by the doctrines of Christ. Who knows how to discern good from evil. Who knows to run the race. Who knows to cast out demons. Who knows to run the church. And then he reminds him of his crown. The second word I told you, crowned. Say crowned. But if you do run your race, there's a crown waiting for you. The word crown is the word Stephanos. What is the word crown? Stephanos. And it refers to a victor's crown. In the ancient games, it was a wreath of leaves placed in the head of a winning athlete. As far as value goes, it wasn't worth anything. Are you with me? But what it represented was worth the struggle. An athlete who walked away with the victor's crown was honored for the rest of his life. Hallelujah. What kind of a crown you're looking for? A crown with, you know, the old Maharaja's war in Hyderabad with some em uh, emeralds and pearls and rubies because it got value? No, 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 no. When Paul was talking about Stephanos, he was talking about the Roman crown that was given made of leaves and reeds. That was the crown, no value. I remember my father played all over India, all the big grounds, got major cups. No cup had single value. Are you with me? But his name has been etched in history. People remember him even today. Your wrestler's son? Oh, he used to play very good hockey. Oh, he was the captain of the cricket team. That's how they know me. They don't know my father as a guard who was working in the railways. They know me as a, as a father who played cricket and hockey and he brought glory and laurels to the Tressler family. That's how my father was known. His name was on front page, Times of India, New York, uh, New York Times something, you know, okay. Times of India, India Express, whatever. Front page name, Christopher Tressler. That was my father's name. 
and he's got stack full of papers stored up sack full there's no place in the house to keep the cups stack full all the cups are in gunny bags are you with me but it didn't bring him fulus no fulus as seven and vijay they play often all right no fulus only cup given cup is a remembrance people carry a memory all the line man stephen of abela man he is the best captain ever that uae has ever seen i'm telling you that's his name he is a cr- captain of amazing grace cricket team that's why he's got all the cups there praise the lord right from many years and same with vijay we go to the house we only keep seeing the cups and the medals so nicely it has been decorated up there but what i'm trying to tell you my brothers and sisters that crown that god has kept for you will leave a memory you know what is the memory that you will etch in your people's mind the legacy that you leave behind the name of the righteous man shall never perish come on how will you get to be known he was a man of god he was a woman of god she was a ch- child was a child of god they walked with god they acted like god they talked like god they spoke like god and they spoke the prophecies of the word of god and their remembrance is etched into the legacies they started to imitate you follow you run after you wanted to catch hold of your anointing are you with me my dear brothers and sisters that's what god is calling us God is calling us that if we are faithful if we are faithful when we are going through difficult times do you run away with your tail tucked under your back and your faith doesn't show up people will never forget true those who are true to your commitment have you ever forgotten the heroes no heroes give hope don't they heroes live forever Have you ever forgotten your heroes? I have not forgotten my heroes. Are you with me? Why we don't forget our heroes? Because heroes give us hope. We want to emulate them, we want to talk like them, we want to sing like them, we want to play like them, we want to look like them. Because they are our heroes. Who's your hero today? Whom are you following? Is Jesus the hero of your life? Are you following Jesus? Or what's happening? Right? so the result is people will never forget that you stood true to your commitment isn't it true that you remember and almost stand in awe of people who stayed faithful to their friends even through difficult times come on don't you remember them who kept their commitment to their spouse even though their marriage was hurting come on all right who remained faithful to their pastor in spite of the hard times in the church amen all are just looking at me who stuck by their principles and refused to bend to the pressures that came to break them let's face it my dear brothers and sisters people who fit into these categories are pretty rare today but they are there they are called champions they are called champions of faith and i tell you church you are called to be the champions of jesus champions of faith champions of courage champions of love champions of forgiveness champions that you will win that victory you will overcome satan and you will get that crown that god has in store for you the question again is this are you committed fully and wholeheartedly for yeshua is a call do you strive athletically are you an amateur or are you a professional how's your faith level where is it is it strong in difficult times can you rise up and say my lord is good job or no job praise the lord business or no business praise the lord are you with me money or no money praise the lord my god is good if he has promised he will fulfill if he has promised he will give there may be delays in god's house but there are never denials in god's house god will never leave me neither will he ever forsake me till the end of this age he will always be with me that's what god is saying to you i know many of you are going through difficult and rough times but god is with you god is for you 
God is in you. God wants to manifest his presence to you so that you will declare the goodness of Yeshua upon your life and tell to the whole world, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He has healed my body. He has healed my mind. He has set me free. He has liberated me. He has delivered me. And that's the call of the Holy Spirit. Let us all rise in the presence of God. Let us all rise. The question is, are we all committed? Do we face hardships bravely or do we tuck our tail and run when things get tough? What would other people say about your level of commitment? What would other people say about your level of commitment? Come on. There are highly committed people in this church. Highly. Highly committed. And if you're not yet at that level of professionalism of your faith, today is your day that you'll say, Lord, here am I. Help me. Fortify my faith, O God. Help me, Jesus. Deliver me. Forgive me of my unbelief. At times I have played around, O Lord, with my faith. I have entertained unbelief in my heart. I had been doubtful, O God. But Lord, you have promised in blessings, will I bless you? In multiplying, will I multiply you? And the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you more than your pastor. If you're in that area where you're struggling in your faith, then today is the day that you will make a commitment and fortify that commitment. If you've ever gone away from that commitment to say, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Please forgive me, O oh God. Please forgive me, Jesus. Lord, I want to be committed to the end, O oh God. If I put my hand to the plow, I will not look back. Because there will be nobody else who can use that plow. And the harvest will perish. That's what Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. He's saying there's an urgency in the spirit. There's an urgency worldwide. For people to go. Urgency. Who will go for me? Who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Is the call of the Holy Spirit. Come on church, let's start praying. Wherever you are. If you are not born again. If you are very first time in the church. If you want your sins to be forgiven and you want Jesus to come into your heart and into your life, then today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day where Jesus wants to come in and make his home inside your life. If there's anyone like that, you can lift up your hand and show it to us. We will pray with you. Hallelujah. Anyone who wants to make Jesus a savior, You want your sins to be forgiven. You want your burden to be rolled away. Then today is your day. Not tomorrow. Today. The Lord is calling you. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today. Don't wait to make your decision next week. Today. You can allow Jesus to come into your heart. Today you can say, Lord, I want to make you my Savior. Today, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Make me your child. Make me your son. Make me your daughter. Today, I want to follow you. Anybody? This is called to the church. If today you've heard the word, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, harden not your heart as in the days of rebellion. When you hear the word, say, God, have mercy. I want to be fruitful in your kingdom. If you had been in that crossroads of life where your faith was shaky. Remember church, 
the devil is is interested in your faith if he can shake your faith he can shake you up that's why he comes to challenge you if he can destroy your faith he can destroy you so he targets your faith he doesn't target you you think you are targeted but he targets your faith if he can douse that fire of faith in your heart then he has you if you are in that position and a place i want to pray with you whoever it is father we want to say thank you lord i pray that in these days and in the end time days we will be professional athletes we will run our race with professionalism even though when there are difficult times lord we will lift up our voices in our prison cells we will pray and praise and glorify the name of yeshua lord i pray that you will bless your church these are your people but by you fill by you with your holy spirit i release your anointing i release your presence i release faith i release your word i release your spirit come upon your church and pour your blessing upon pour your blessing pour your blessing on jesus in blessings will i bless you in multiplying will i multiply you we are the children of abraham abba father the same command and the same blessing that was upon abraham is ours and we receive it in the name of jesus we receive the abrahamic covenantal blessing to be a portion in the name of jesus the blessings of salvation the blessing of healing the blessing of prosperity the blessing of protection the blessing of oh lord eternity we receive it in faith in the name of jesus and i pray lord give us the grace that as we put a hand to the plow we will never look back never look back I pray for the entire congregation right from the adult to a small child they'll be highly and fully committed dedicated devoted people of Yeshua they will not lack the zeal they will not lack the passion they'll be full of the passion for Jesus they'll be full of the zeal of the house of the Lord will consume them oh father that they will see the glory of the living God the power of the holy one of Israel they will oh lord behold the glory of Yeshua they will see Jesus manifested in their lives oh god you know the manifestation of your presence is for your bride it's not for the world outside that's why they don't know you it is for us and i pray that your church will have the manifestation of your presence of god the thick anointing of the holy spirit of god the shekinah glory of god will overtake your church in the name of jesus your church will not lack your glory the church will not lack your favor the church will abound oh lord from faith to faith and glory to glory that they will be built up they'll be strong they'll be lord robust and they will run the race looking unto the author of their faith the lord jesus christ we thank you we bless you and we give you the praise in jesus is most holy mighty and matchless name we pray amen now the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of the father and the fellowship of his sweet holy spirit be with us now and forevermore and all of us said amen 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 give the lord a big clap offering <laughs> hallelujah